Hello, my name is Lea Pilsner. I'm a researcher at E3G, we're a climate change think tank. And today I'm going to present to you Horizon Europe, the program, and its potential for clean innovation for an online training. So let's start. What is really Horizon Europe? Horizon Europe is the flagship research and innovation program or framework program of the European Union that will replace Horizon 2020 in 2021. Um, it is one of the largest funding sources of um, research innovation and obviously clean innovation as part of the EU budget. Um, as a result, it's very key when it comes to clean innovation. Um, why are we actually particularly looking at Horizon Europe when there is so many other um, funds when it comes to supporting clean innovation. As you can see from, from the graph, um, there's a bunch of them. Um, but the specificity of Horizon Europe really is that it covers the whole range um, of, um, of stages when it comes to the innovation process. So from pre-commercial to uptake, which is uh, different from the rest. And um, why are we talking about it now? Um, we're talking about it now because Horizon Europe uh, is part of the EU budget, or also called MFF, uh, which is to be decided, uh, well, is in the process actually of being decided. It started in May, the Commission put out its proposal, um, and the co-legislators, meaning the Council and the European Parliament, have been negotiating to come to an agreement about what the fund will really do and will really contain. Um, that budget, as you can see also from this graph, is actually quite big, um, even though it's, I think, less than last time around. It's up to 1.3 trillion euros. Uh, it covers a whole range of EU policies. Um, but when you look at the share or, or the amount Horizon Europe gets or should get, as it's proposed, uh, it's about 100 billion euros, which makes uh, Horizon Europe really a, quite a big fund compared to others. Um, now, what are its main features? Um, now, just looking at the highlights here, uh, it's been proposed to have 100 billion euros, which is more than last time around, which was about 80 billion. Uh, that's quite remarkable because, as I said, that the budget, the whole of the budget itself is reducing. Um, and it's got a proposed share um, of 35% that should go to climate related projects. Um, that's the so called climate mainstreaming aspect. Some other, some other features include the structure of the fund. So it's structured around or articulated around three um, different areas or pillars. The first one being open science, which is mainly about fundamental research. You've got a second one that's called global challenges that focuses mostly on um, various different kinds of challenges, including one on climate, energy, mobility. And a third one uh, called open innovation, and a fourth dimension, let's put it that way, uh, which is called strengthening the European research area and which is very much a cross-cutting um, dimension of the program. Um, so what is really new about all this? There's quite a few things, and I'll focus on the aspect that, that matter for clean innovation. So you've got that cluster I mentioned to you, which is climate, energy and mobility. And what's special about it is that it brings together these three areas together and hopefully should give a more well, climate related focus uh, and that should help with the development of clean innovation in these fields. Um, you also have the European Innovation Council or EIC, which is an institution that is supposed to help with breakthrough, breakthrough technologies. Um, and this was at the pilot level so far and it's been confirmed. You've got partnerships between industry and member states, uh, which did exist before, but now they've been streamlined to be more effective uh, and impact oriented uh, and make sure that the funding also uh, gets spent in that way. Um, you've got the strategic planning, which is a co-creation process uh, that guides the implementation of the global challenges pillar and um, around broad and long term objectives. And finally, you've got the missions, which is really the, the shiny bit of Horizon Europe uh, that attracted a lot of attention. Why? Well, because of course it's new, but it's also because it attracts people's imagination. And that's exactly the point um, of the missions. It's um, supposed to be something like the man on the moon, and it's a goal-driven approach to innovation with measurable um, outcomes and a set time frame in a way that also transcends the very silos of, of research areas. And, it is also supposed to connect with uh, actual citizens and not just engage the usual uh, research stakeholders. Um, so when it comes to how they're supporting clean innovation, uh, all these aspects I mentioned to you about. Um, so you still have the fact that Horizon Europe ranges across the various different areas or processes or uh, of uh, innovation funding from um, fundamental research to 
partly markets, um, you've got that cluster uh, on climate energy mobility, which represents about 15 billion euros. And as mentioned, um, it, it's hoping that having a dedicated pot of money for that area should really help promote clean innovation in these fields. Um, you've got the 35% climate mainstreaming targets, meaning that, yes, on the one side, you've got dedicated funding in one cluster, but you also have this share of the entire program that can go to climate related projects. That means you can have those projects outside these dedicated funding areas and hopefully touch other areas than the usual ones. Uh, the EIC, um, with its support uh, to, of breakthrough technologies, is supposed to bridge this valley of death to reach actually the market. Uh, and this is something that could help uh, breakthrough innovation technologies to actually reach market readiness uh, and, and go further from there. Um, the missions on the other side, so you've got the technologies on one side, and you've got missions which could really help with the deployment of existing technologies uh, by bringing them to scale, and, and such as, for example, uh, if you take the idea of a mission around 100 carbon neutral cities, you could really see how it could help deploying uh, at scale throughout Europe. And finally, you can see uh, from the overall program that there is an effort to rationalize and have a more impact oriented uh, uh, approach to research funding. Um, so what were our expectations at E3G as a climate change think tank about what Horizon Europe could really do um, for the transition uh, and for clean innovation? Um, well, we had hope for a doubling of investment um, on uh, or for clean energy. That is not exactly the case. The fund is bigger, but the share that goes to climate and, and uh, energy mobility just increases a little bit. Um, we were hoping for an ambitious climate mainstreaming target. What we're having is a 35% target, which is really the same as the previous MFF. We were hoping for an explicit exclusion for fossil fuels from being funded uh, in the program. We don't really have that. We don't expect that to be a big issue, but it, issue, but it is very important to send the right signal, um, especially in the time where we're talking about carbon neutrality. Um, we were hoping to have um, R&D emissions that would uh, be set to overcome the barriers to a low carbon uh, economy. Uh, we do have that because there's two mission areas that cover climate adaptation and mitigation. And we're hoping that there'd be a focus a bit away from just technological um, innovation, but also um, something that supports um, innovation that engages citizens. And that's something really that could happen through the missions, depending on the way they're implemented. So this is still open. So what are other outcomes? That cluster I mentioned to you is still together. The three aspects where there was a risk of them being torn apart, but they're not. Um, the EIC and partnerships are accepted. And um, we've got the mission areas that have been selected. Two of those, as I mentioned, relate to climate. Uh, what is still open? Uh, well, we have the total envelope for Horizon Europe, the budget envelope that is still open to be discussed. That means also the share that goes to climate, energy and mobility. Um, we also have the st strategic planning, which is in the process of being discussed. We have also synergies between EU funds, because as I mentioned before, um, Innovation is funded obviously mainly through Horizon Europe, but not only. And what stays open is how these funds will work together. And finally, the missions. Um, which missions, how will they be governed, how will they be implemented? That is still open to be discussed. And in terms of timeline, what are we looking at? Well, originally, one of the plans was October, and that was something the European Commission had um, kind of hoped for. This is perhaps not so likely to take place. So we're looking now at 2020, uh, but this is obviously um, to be decided by member states who are the main uh, negotiating party to this. Um, there is another time frame if you're more interested in a more specifics when it comes to the missions I mentioned, the strategic planning. Uh, these are taking place at the level of the European Commission and different stakeholders and have a different time scale. They're being prepared as we speak um, at different speeds. Um, but generally, we're talking about 2020 for them to be finalized. So to conclude, really, Horizon Europe um, is a very important fund when it comes to supporting clean innovation from a technology point of view, like having new clean innovation, but also deploying existing ones at scale, um, as well as looking at the social dimension of the energy transition. It is not necessarily designed to achieve carbon neutrality. Um, and there are some aspects, though, that could still be improved because they're still open. 
Um, overall, I think what I'd like to start thinking about is the challenges ahead for that kind of fund, especially with what's happening at the moment at European level with the carbon neutrality strategy being discussed by heads of state and also the European Commission preparing its industrial strategy. And what's very interesting or what will be interesting is to see how these new um, frameworks will actually manage to include the existing Horizon 20. Horizon Europe program uh, and make sure clean innovation and that fund is very much integrated into sort of forward looking efforts. So I presented to you um, in broad terms the Horizon Europe program and its potential for clean innovation. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And if you're interested, have a look at E3G's website for more information. Thank you.